We previously reported on over 50 COVID cases aboard Royal Caribbean's Jewel of the Seas while she's sailing in her European season. However, the vessel has just completed the season and she's currently on her way to Miami and she expects to see her first paying passengers out of the US in just 15 days. However, there's some bad news coming from Jewel of the Seas as an additional 13 passengers tested positive for COVID just on the recent voyage that ended yesterday. Carnival Cruise Lines has a brand new ship under construction in China, and they just wrapped up a major portion of the project. We have updates from some premium cruise brands who are looking to expand their restart process. It appears that Carnival Cruise Lines has increased the capacity on board their ships, and Carnival Mardi Gras in particular has a staggering amount of guests on her most recent sailing. Plus, the Royal Caribbean Ultimate World Cruise is still on sale, but you're running out of time if you'd like to snag a cabin aboard the Serenade of the Seas for her trip around the world. All this coming up on Midship. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midship's YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey. Thank you so much for joining us on the channel today. I want to remind you we are only five days away from my next cruise aboard MSC Divina. And maybe more exciting, we're only 13 days away from our trip aboard the Odyssey of the Seas. And speaking of Royal Caribbean, they are in the news today. So let's take a look at a story from cruiseradio.net about Royal Caribbean's Ultimate World Cruise by Bruce Parkinson. Royal Caribbean's Ultimate World Cruise already 70% sold out. Royal Caribbean made a big splash with the recent announcement of its first ever world cruise a 274-night mega sailing visiting 65 countries, 150 destinations, and all seven continents. The ultimate world cruise aboard Serenade of the Seas was announced a few days ago on October 20th. The 2,476-passenger ship will sail round-trip from Miami, departing December 10th, 2023, and she'll return on September 10th, of 2024. That's two years away, and you might think Royal Caribbean figured it needed some lead time to sell a cruise with fares that start at $60,000 and can go up into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But that's not what happened, as Royal Caribbean International President and CEO Michael Bailey excitedly explained during last week's quarterly results call. Michael said, I have to jump in. I have to jump in. We launched the World Cruise with Royal Caribbean 10 days ago, and we only made it available to 16 million loyalty members, and within the first seven days, we were already 70% booked up. The average price of a balcony room for the cruise is $75,000, and a royal suite on Serenade went for $760,000. Oh, and all the bookings include non-refundable deposits. Michael Bailey went on to say, even we were taken aback by the unbelievable response of our loyalty members. Now more than ever, people have resolved to travel the world and make up for lost time. To travelers asking themselves where they should go next, Michael Bailey says you should go everywhere. For those interested in a piece of the remaining real estate on Serenade of the Seas, for the Ultimate World Cruise, there's a choice of booking the full trip or one or more of four shorter segments. So I'm a little curious if anyone from the midships family actually booked aboard this World Cruise with Royal Caribbean. If you did, why don't you go ahead and reach out to me in our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash midships. I would love to talk to you a little bit more about the trip because I'm really interested in seeing some pictures, videos, and a little bit of behind the scenes look out of Serenade of the Seas as she makes her way around the world. Of course, even if you're not sailing on board the World Cruise, I would still invite you to join up at facebook.com forward slash midships. When you stop by, make sure to share a picture from your last cruise. So we have a few stories about Carnival Cruise Line, and let's go ahead and dig into the first one from cruiseradio.net about Carnival increasing capacity limits on board some of their ships. Carnival Cruise Line has started to notch up capacity limits by Sarah Bretz. Carnival Cruise Line has started to notch up their capacity limits as the cruise industry continues to make a strong comeback. Carnival's brand ambassador John Heald said on Facebook, that Mardi Gras is currently sailing at 85% capacity. And to put that into perspective, the Carnival Mardi Gras has a guest capacity of nearly 5,300 individuals. So that means the most recent Carnival Mardi Gras sailing could have seen up to almost 4,500 passengers. When the line returned to sailing in July, it was at just 70% capacity and has slowly been increasing the numbers since then. Carnival says they're currently sailing near 99% vaccinated on board their cruises, with the exception of children, who cannot yet get the vaccine. Well, and isn't that just a little bit of doublespeak for you here on a Tuesday afternoon? 
99% of adults on the cruise ship for Carnival are fully vaccinated, not 99% of the total guests on board. Obviously, with children under the age of 14 not being fully vaccinated, we are definitely not looking at 99% fully vaccinated cruises. So let's keep talking about Carnival Cruise Line. They have a brand new ship currently being constructed over in China, and I'd like to give you a quick look at a major milestone on that project. From CruiseIndustryNews.com, Superstructure for Carnival's China cruise ship new build is done. Shanghai Weigaokiao Shipbuilding Yard has completed hall work and the superstructure on its first cruise ship new build for Carnival Corporation's joint venture cruise brand in China, Carnival China, which is set to begin sailing in 2023. The ship will now enter the internal outfitting and interior completion stages. According to a statement, the ship is being built in partnership with Finn Kinteri on Carnival's Vista class platform and is expected to be followed by a sister ship in 2024. So there's just something really cool to me about watching these floating cities just come together piece by piece. I absolutely love looking at the progress being made on these ships as they're built along. And darn it, since we're still talking about Carnival, let's go ahead and look at their two additional ships that are undergoing dry docks. From CruiseHive.com by Emrys Thacker, two more Carnival ships undergo dry dock. And look at that rusty ship. Carnival Cruise Line isn't just well underway in restarting operations, but also well underway with ship dry docks. Eight vessels have already received the new red, white, and blue livery, and another two are on the way. Carnival Sunshine and Carnival Spirit are currently receiving the upgrade. And we're only going to talk about the Carnival Sunshine today because she's the one that's going to be operating out of the U.S. market. Carnival Sunshine is one of the latest ships in the fleet to enter dry dock, in a busy year of ship updates, the vessel follows Carnival Paradise, which just finished her upgrade at the shipyard in Cadiz, Spain. And if you'd like to learn more about Carnival Paradise's dry docks, you can check out our video that we made yesterday. I'll go ahead and link it down below this video. While you're down there, I'd urge you to check out some of the links in our description box, especially some of the Amazon affiliate links to some totally awesome cruise swag that I would recommend you check out for your next cruise. Oh, and even if you just click the link, it does help the channel just a little bit. Thank you so much. The Sunshine class vessel entered dry dock in Cadiz, Spain on October 21st and is receiving the new livery, which has already rolled out to eight other ships in the Carnival brand, along with the brand new Mardi Gras. In addition to the livery, Sunshine is receiving some routine hotel maintenance along with some minor enhancements. Often when it comes to refurbishments like this, there will be new carpets, tiling, and some other changes in specific departments around the ship. It's the 10th dry dock the vessel is going through, including when the ship was named Carnival Destiny before her transformation back in 2013. Carnival Sunshine will be ready to welcome guests back on board starting January 13th when she restarts for the first time since March of 2020 out of Charleston, South Carolina. So congratulations to Carnival Cruise Line on continuing this fantastic process of getting all your vessels updated to that new hall livery. I can't wait to see each and every one of them in person someday soon. Now we talk a lot about the carnivals and the Royal Caribbeans of the world on this channel, but we can't forget that there are premium cruise brands out there. And I wanna share with you some restart updates from some of those brands. From cruiseindustrynews.com, premium cruise brands to expand restart to more destinations. As the cruise restart reaches new heights, premium operators are expanding with more ships restarting in more destinations, including South Africa as well as the Panama Canal. Let's look at the restart status of a few key brands. Celebrity Cruises currently has eight ships in service, with two more set to follow up by December 1st. And of note for Celebrity, they plan to return to service the Celebrity Constellation on November 7th, just a few days away, out of the port of Tampa. Now let's check out Holland America Line. They currently have four ships in service with one scheduled to resume operations on December 1st. So obviously the Rotterdam recently restarted operations on October 20th, and now we are looking forward to New Staten Dam welcoming back guests in Fort Lauderdale towards the end of the month on November 21st. And the last luxury brand that we're gonna take a look at today is Princess Cruises. They're currently operating six ships with two more set to follow up by December 1st. And the two additional vessels coming into service by the end of the year are of course Caribbean Princess, as well as Enchanted Princess, who will both be sailing out of Port Everglades. Well, that's all the fun and happy news out of the way for today. Now we have to get into something a little bit more serious. We've been reporting over the last month or two about Jewel of the Seas. She's been sailing over in the UK and she has been really, really struggling to get her COVID problems under control on board the ship. Now we have an update to that because she has finished her season and she's currently heading back 
towards Miami, where she's slated to resume operations in about two weeks from now. Now, there's a problem because she just recently had yet another large COVID outbreak on board just a few days ago on her final cruise. So let's look at a story from cruiseindustrynews.com for the latest update on Jewel of the Seas. From Jim Walker's CruiseLawNews.com, published by Jim Walker. Last test before Jewel of the Seas sails to Miami. 13 positive again for COVID-19. The Jewel of the Seas just finished its summer season sailing out of Cyprus with even more disappointing COVID test results. 13 people, nine guests, and four crew tested positive for the virus at the end of last week. This is in addition to the 50 passengers on this cruise ship who tested positive in the prior 30-day period. The information comes from a trusted crew member on board Jewel of the Seas. Earlier last week, a family of four on the ship was the subject of discussion between ship management and port authorities in one of the ports of call after three of the family members tested positive for COVID. The mother and two of the couple's minor children tested positive. The father was considered to be a close contact. The ship ordered the family into isolation. The initial plan was for the family to be disembarked in the port. However, the Greek authorities nixed the plan to send them ashore, and the family remained isolated on the ship until she returned to her home port in Lamassel. In addition to these three positive guests, six additional passengers did test positive for COVID-19. Four crew members also tested positive on board. The guests who had tested positive were taken by ambulance to Villas in Lamassel, where they'll be expected to remain in isolation. Jewel of the Seas is now sailing across the Mediterranean Sea to Gibraltar before beginning her voyage across the Atlantic to Miami, where she's scheduled to arrive on November 14th and then sail a five-night Western Caribbean cruise the very next day on November 15th. It's anticipated that the US CDC will designate the ship as falling under either yellow or orange color codes, given the fact that the ship has routinely experienced anywhere from a few to over 20 positive COVID cases per cruise for the past two months. As of today's date, there are at least six Royal Caribbean operated ships, Allure of the Seas, Independence, Liberty, Mariner, Serenade, and Symphony of the Seas, which the CDC is either monitoring or investigating COVID-19 outbreaks on board. So like I said, we will continue to monitor what's going on on board Jewel of the Seas. For some reason, they are just really struggling to get this under control. Obviously, 13 cases is way too many on board a cruise ship, especially given the fact that Royal Caribbean CEO Michael Bailey was recently quoted as saying they typically see between one and three COVID cases on board any given sailing for Royal Caribbean. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about the Jewel of the Sea story go ahead and comment below. I do my best to read and respond to all the comments on my videos. While you're down there leaving a comment, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I know that about 80% of you who watch have not yet subscribed. Why don't you go ahead and try taking us for a quick test drive. If it's not for you after a few days or a few weeks, you can always unsubscribe. It won't hurt my feelings too, too much. In addition, the most important thing you can do for the channel is always give a thumbs up on our videos. It tells YouTube not only that you love cruising, but you think this video should be shared with other people who also love a good cruise ship. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. And until tomorrow, we'll see you on the midship.